all right what is going on everyone and welcome back to more black desert so today we are going to be doing an hour grind at bloody monastery the elvia version i don't really know why i just felt like i wanted to grind here again and just try it out but this time we're going to be playing on awakening and i haven't done that in about like a year so me learning everything all over again and yeah just we're gonna chat about stuff and I guess one of the hot topics is all the changes happening in the Korean servers. So I want to talk about that. That's like the Kron stones and how a lot of grind spots are changing and everything. So how did they get here? What the heck? All right. Anyway, so let me hold on. Let me actually just pop everything while I'm at it. Uh, can I tent in here? And, um, what is my thing at? 282? All right, cool. So, yeah, as you guys know, in Korea, they have some changes. And whether people think it's good or not, I don't know. So one of them being, you can grind in the Marnie realm, like, technically 12 hours a day if you wanted to. Because every other hour is going to like regenerate the time so what do i think about that as a veteran player and ever since i started this game years ago i was always like used to just grinding without the marnie realm because it's like we didn't have that in the start of the game so obviously there's a lot of arguments saying that like it'll kill the open world pvp and stuff and realistically i don't think so at all because I think that, like, very rarely do people come in, like, actively duel for spot for me. Like, I also don't grind in, like, the super meta spots, but I've seen things at Centaurs go wild, and even then, it's, like, it's not that bad. But I think it's overall a good thing, because you know how people are saying that if you have, like, a dead world then there's nothing happening but honestly that's kind of what happens normally so i also think it's a good thing because if everyone is allowed to uh go into the marnie realm more often that means like the open world is i guess that could be changed in a way of how the servers work and right now what you should do is I would just go to Arsha if you want the extra bonus. And so what I would do if they're going to be changing that is changing the Arsha channel from 50% extra drop rate to 100% and add a, add a few more Arsha servers. So if you guys don't know what that means, Arsha is the server where uh, PvP is enabled without karma loss. And... Overall, I think it's a good change because you know what's worse than having all this gear and having a dead world? Like, the game being dead and no one's actually playing it. So, if no one's playing the game, that means your gear is worthless. And we want more people to continue playing the game and getting better over time. So, I think overall, having multiple Marnie Realm or like the 12 hours a day Marnie Realm technically is a good thing and yeah overall people are probably gonna get mad at it but like realistically even when i grind high spots like underground gyphon and i don't know what are some other notable spots these days actually i don't know i the spots i grind are not too bad I think Underwater Sakraya is not too bad either. But overall, I think it's a good thing. Just because if it allows more people to check out the game and try it, that means overall, like, people are going to be getting more gear and PvP is going to be happening more often. And people are just going to be playing the game. So I think it's overall good. Uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was the Cronstone change. And as you guys know, right now we 
have 621 crons for a premium outfit if you were to sell that on the mark or not like market but if you were to buy a costume a premium one off the central market and extract it that's how much you get out of it and uh, they're raising it by like 20 percent, i believe and so it's gonna be like 900 something but they're also raising the blacksmith crons to um three mil instead of two mil so i think it's a bad thing that they're doing that because obviously we need an increase in a cron stone buff from outfits but i don't think they need to raise the vendor cron oh uh, crap i accidentally picked the wrong one i think oh that buff i think i chose awakening instead of the, or the succession one but um yeah, what they should have done is just increase the cost of uh, premium outfits on the market. So, like, if people decide they want to whale and sell it on the market, it's going to be, what, like, over a billion per outfit that you can sell instead of, like, 835, which is what it's at now. And they just leave the vendor crons the same. That's it. And that would be fine. But they're just trying to like equalize it, which is not really the best play. But I do believe that we should have a Cronstone buff. Oh wait, they changed it. Nice. I haven't grinded in a spot that required Elvia no or Elvia spots in general. So back in the day, if you if you know, they used to have a main hand, which is like succession and awakening buff, and then I guess from now they just have one which i think is a good thing because you would have to actually stop and then pick the one you wanted oh also so that's good now that we don't have to actually select the one we want i i feel like i'm missing something to be honest So, I'm not sure. I'm still learning Awakening again. But I don't think you can do an infinite combo with this one. Because it's just still a little bit of downtime. And obviously, I don't think I'm doing it right either. But some classes like Wusa, you can use it the same rotation infinitely. Whereas I think you still have downtime from your combo. Even though they did make Dark Knight PvE or Awakening PvE a lot better, which I think is good. But I just need more practice. But yeah, some goals that we talked about earlier this month are what we're going to be doing is trying to go for a Pendebareka of some sort preferably a necklace because that is like the better of the two stats and or like compared to a belt so far and then the earring earring is one of the things you work on like when you already have a pen belt and a necklace i thought that could hit i don't know the ranges of everything I, am I are my pets on agile? Yeah, I'm just like <laughs> I should be in a spot that's uh not 280. You know what what they should just add tier 5 pets for all slots. Also, 
it's been a while since I've grinded here because like the only time you're here is when you are going for the cup thingies for your accessories. And then after that, there's like no point. But I heard they're actually changing the price of all the cups from two mil right now to five mil. And so that means it might actually start being worth it to actually go grind these spots again. And I don't know when the change is happening, but whenever they're five mil each for the cups on all your accessories, I think that's good. Also, I guess let's talk about that while we're on the topic of accessory cups. So people have always been asking me, which one is the better one, the yellow or the blue one? I personally chose the blue one for all of them because I also do PVP. But I think for like, if you are exclusively grinding, then the yellow ones might be better if you don't reach the, all the like AP caps and everything which you could probably just Google at some point. One thing I have to get used to is using the snatch ability. Just like this and then the soul snatch. I keep forgetting that exists. I've just been playing Awakening too much. Also, I need to find, like, <laughs> spots where I can loot at the same speed of grinding. I thought those were going to drop, but apparently not. How much trash loot do people get here? Ooh, a shard. We need those. So if... If those are going to be... Like, if you need 200 of them... Or maybe 300 total... For each of the cups... I... How much are they going to be? Like... 20? Are they considered like 25 mil? Either way, like getting them is worth a lot then. I actually think that right now for PVE Awakening actually might be like overall better than Succession at high end grind spots just because the timing like what they changed in the Dark Knight patch of like last month I believe is the damage obviously is up which is always a good thing. But for Awakening, what else they changed was the timings on certain abilities. So, like, things should flow better. And being closer to a one-to-one -one cycle so you can do a combo infinitely if you're good at what you're doing. That's something that I think all clashes should have. Like, right now, Wusa has an infinite combo that flows really well together. But I think Dark Knight still has a little bit of downtime between a few of them. So these Narcs Lightnings. I should actually do another video of this exact spot later on. But me doing it in succession just to compare myself. 
but I think I want to have to actually practice a little bit of this a little bit more because I'm pretty sure if I did another hour after I could actually do just significantly better. It is pretty nice being able to just do like shattering down the hallway like this and then <laughs> everything dies. It's nice. Ooh. Ooh, we got a bell. Nice. I wonder how many bells we can get at by the end of this hour. Also, there was no one even here, like in the non Marnie realm. But I just wanted to grind in peace for an hour. It's not like I don't think anyone was actually going to be here. Oh yeah, okay, so I guess what I'm gonna do is start reading off some YouTube comments that I've got. So if you've been watching all my videos lately and reading the comments, there are some things I can answer while we're at it. So one question I remember getting was, at what point should you convert to distos and how much DP should you have like with them? So I think by the time you should convert into like tet distos is Probably when you are full pen, um, pen armors and weapons, it doesn't have to be black stars or anything, but just like pen boss gear. And so your DP is probably within the, uh, 330, 350 range, somewhere between there if you have Capris into it. And that's when I think it's usually safe to be able to convert into Vistos from whatever you have because that'll also allow you to grind Elvia orcs. And I assume your AP by this point is like, um, probably around 280 and up. If, assuming you have like full pen everything, that's probably when your AP is at a decent range. So around 330, 350 is when I would start considering swapping the distos. You could do it earlier if you wanted to, but it's one of those, like, if you get caught while you're grinding, like, let's say you're at Elvia Orcs, and you get CC'd with, like, 300 AP, that's, or, like, 300 DP, it kind of is a little scary, because they kind of just group up on you, and you get chunked, so. I think to be safe, I would say 330 at minimum. Also, today we made another video on pets, and so they recently returned all of the pets that were tier 1, because for pets right now, as of today, there are no more levels on them. There are only tiers. So as a new player, you're probably like, okay, what's the difference? So back in the day, um, when you had pets, they started at level 1. Pretty standard, right? And at level 1... You had to level them up by like just, I don't know, either grinding or letting your pets uh, get hungry and then you feed them. And then the higher the level, the faster their loot speed would be. So then as of today, they removed that, which I think is a very good change. And so what tiers do is on your pets, if we look at this, you see how there's four skills. Um, Every tier gets one new skill. And so you just get more passive stats by getting tier 4 and 5 and all that's good stuff. Every time I see that you have entered combat zone, I know I can turn that setting off, but it, it's like it's the same exact sign as when your HP gets low. So it's like, oh, you have 20% HP, and I was like, oh no, did I get chunked? 
But no, it's just me going into combat zone again. You know, I should just turn this on. What is a good one to have? I don't know, is that it? Pretty sure if I started my hour off with that, it would have been a lot better. I do really like the Cluster of Despair. That's probably one of my favorite abilities. And you guys, I don't know how many of you guys have been playing BDO before uh, Succession even came out. So as you guys know, Awakenings for all classes is but it's just like the default norm. And I actually really enjoy Awakening Dark Knight because it has like all the flashy abilities and that's kind of why I chose the class as a start. But at the same time, like Succession at a few points was significantly better. And even today to an extent, I still think both Awakening and Succession shine at their own different things. So... As of right now, if you were to ask me which one I think is better, Succession or Awakening, I think that's hard, but if I had to, like, put a min-max, like, for PvP, Succession is better. For PvE, I think Awakening has a slight edge at very high end, but if you are a new player or just, like, I don't know, under the 300 AP mark, uh, both of them will be just fine, so... Like, if you're grinding here with, like, 290 AP, your chances are that Awakening is a little bit better. But if you're grinding Ash Forest, for example, I'm not sure. Like, Awakening will feel safer, that's for sure. But I'm not sure, trash-wise, which one is better. It all comes down to, like, how well do you play your class and do you know the timers? Because if you could get everything grouped up properly, um, it's a lot better for whichever one, like, can do this infinite combo. This, that was also one thing, the Spirit Blaze right here. I remember back in the day trying to make that skill work, and it just, it was not great, because it it's a lot faster now. You saw how fast that ability goes off. Back in the day, it was really slow, and, like, if you tried to use it, people would just grab you out of that animation, and... It's like, it, not even that, it just doesn't really do much damage. I don't even think it does much damage right now. But it's it's easier to use, which I think is a good thing. I do wish with Succession, though, you had more options for 100%. Like, for example, Awakening has all of these abilities. Succession only has two of them. Which makes sense because you have a less, or like, your pool of skills is a lot smaller. But man, I don't know. Like, I can think of a few other things I would use it on. Like enforcement. If you do a 200% enforcement, that like wipes. That should just wipe a group in front of you. Yeah. 
They don't even have enforcement, but I think if you did 200, the way it would look is something like this. And then if you get hit by a cross as in a 200%, that should just do a lot. <laughs> I will say though, Awakening DK APM a little bit higher than Succession, but ultimately it's not a big deal. I just need to learn how to do timings better. That does really feel nice, being able to launch a hundred like that, firing shatterings down hallways. I'm still trying to make that work. But it doesn't feel like Spirit Blaze is going to work. I was actually testing a little bit of PvP yesterday with my friend in battle arena or my guildy and fighting sorks still very difficult is that a better pull i don't know if it's like worth the time doing that However, we're due for a f one of the spirit buffs any any given time now. Maybe we'll get a nail. How much are lunars worth? Hopefully a lot. Actually, let me look it up. Three hundred. Not bad. I think my next upgrade is going to be obviously either a Pendebo or a Pendon earring. And I'm not going to sell my Disto. But for PvP, I think a Pendon would be pretty nice. That felt a little wonky. All right, let me pop this uh, 100. Oh my God, that didn't hit as many things as I thought it would. You know, one thing I really do like about Succession, even though the range isn't there. The fact that your Wheel of Fortune looks like this, but then your regular Wheel of Fortune looks like that. So, 
The Rabom one is normal size for what Succession looks like. Except an um, Awakening to Rabom one, not really that good. Another shard. That's cool. Why is that glowing? What the? I feel like I did that poll wrong. I don't know. I want to try to get all of them grouped up. Also not hit trees in the process. I think really what the Rabombs are best used for are getting aggro and having them come to you. And then that's when you dump all your big damage abilities. Also, it'd be nice to get a spirit buff right now because I've been off cooldown for solid like five to ten minutes. Maybe we'll try it tomorrow, but I'll bring my own one that you can convert your Libertos down in Glish, that weekly quest. Dang, that's really, this is really killing my trash loot an hour by not having spirit buff on. Oh, our first seed of the void. That's a free 10 mil. I know you could do the pull back here, but I don't clear fast enough for it to matter. This is just not kill all of those. Overall, though, I, I like Awakening. I just, um... think that I like Succession back in the day pre-buff. Because it just did more. That's about it. But I still think Succession is better for PvP. How does that not hit the ones behind it? What in the world? They really need to make these hundreds hit more enemies. So they're like six targets. Where were all those fairies when the first five minutes happened? And where are they now? It's like, no. Well, if you need it, well, too bad.
In theory, you should get like three an hour. I forgot we're in Elvia, and then we could use that as well. That explains a lot. We're 30 minutes into... Wait. We're like 35 minutes into the grind. We got one buff. Please have a buff. Can I at least get a a bell so uh we can have more at the end of the hour? Yes. We're overdue. Should have gotten one 17 minutes ago. <laughs> Dang, 17 minutes? Maybe a little bit less. Maybe like 15. But man, that's a lot of trash loot lost. Like, I, if I were to look at my old videos, I'd probably be at like... At least 15k trash loot now. But no. Game was like, we don't want you to have good luck. No bells, no lunar necks. Ah, now they all want to start appearing when I already have one. I see, I see, okay. Ooh, that's new. I never seen they, they must have changed the animation. I swear I don't remember it looking like that before. I wanna do that again. Yo, I'm a Valkyrie. Have you ever gotten hit by one of those Valkyrie, like, ults? I don't know what it's called. But the Valkyrie ultimate that, like, basically just deletes everyone. Yo, that's what it looks like. We're about to go in and hard slam. Whoop. Pop. You know what I think would make Dark Knight better? I think Dark Knights are okay now, but if you compare it to, like, Zerkers, Woosas, and everything, I, they're just okay. So here's how I would change um, Dark Knights, both Succession and Awakening. I think the damage is fine. I think the times could be a little bit better to have an infinite combo like other classes do. But realistically, I think the range could be a little bit better. And or hit more targets. That's all I would change for them. At all gear levels.
I've never seen that animation before. Oh, we're over clearing. All right. I guess I'll take another one of these. Yeah, I for sure, if I were to do another hour of grinding, I could do significantly better. It's because I was missing a lot of skills the first, like, half an hour. Range on these abilities are so bad. But yeah, I think that really is all I'd change range on a lot of these abilities. Because if you look at like a Megu, for example, have you seen their red ability? Like, that does so. It's like, not only does it do a lot of damage, the range on that is cracked. I'm probably missing a few buffs, but if you guys are curious to see what my stats look like while grinding, that's what it is. You would add the Awakening AP, plus the damage against monsters at the bottom. But also then, I'm also missing a bit. Like, I don't think this spot needs accuracy, so I'm using an accuracy thing. Like, I was using that for Ash Forest, and, like, even then, I don't really think I'm missing an Ash Forest, but it's also good just to have. I could add another monster damage if I wanted to. Also, while we're at it, I just want to say thank you guys so much for using the code I have. And for all of you who are looking to buy pearls and everything, I just want to say thanks for all of you who actually used it. It helps the uh, monthly finances go, so that's always nice. looted faster. <laughs> I guess I understand why 
they only allow you to have one tier five pet because that's like the leader of the group. But at this point, just let us have all five. Tier fives at this point. Loot speed should not be a problem in video games. Ooh, another bill. Another shard. I think I actually need blue shards, so I should grind those again. What do you guys think? For all of you who have grind Elvia a lot, do you think you should be able to convert like shards from one to another color? Obviously not at a one to one rate, but like what about like, I don't know, five to one? Would that be okay? I don't know. Because I've grinded a lot of Elvia Oryx and I have like over 700 red shards. But my bottleneck is the other ones. Did Garmoth reset, like, after the patch today? Like, you... The way it works, I think... I don't know if it's an event. But you can only do, like, three a week. Well, I mean, you can do as many as you want, but... You can get a quest for three of them a week. Let me, let me check. Uh... Nine out of eight. What in the world? I... Dead ass thought we did that earlier. That answers my question. All right. How much time do we have on the bells? 28, 30, an hour. Okay. So, um, we had some weird timing. And. I think I'm going to have to go to Garmoth when it happens. But basically, if you don't know what the bells are, you call them and you just like basically kill waves of enemies. And you just get more trash loot. Is it good? All right. So, like, when you grind an hour at Bloody Monastery, you're really grinding about, like, uh, an hour and a half. Oh, the lightning. If the bells were going to expire by the time Vel finished, then I would have to add, run them like right now. But luckily, we'll have time. I think at orcs you get more void seeds but here you get a lot more of these things and if you don't actually know what these do like the lightnings and well the other ones that they give you 
basically if you enhance black star armors that's used as an equivalent of like capra stones to get some stats on the side uh is it worth doing it no it's not just sell that from silver on the vendor because you shouldn't be making black star armors in the first place and it's not worth it If you can buy one at pen and it's cheaper than capricing it all the way then it, that's like the only time i think it might be valuable if you're going to convert it directly into like fallen god labresca or whatever but nine out of ten times the value is not there what did that that did not hit all of them and they're like point blank Um, okay, so I think Garmoth spawns in 11 minutes, at least from now, and I should probably pick up my quest because on reset, Garmoth just gets melted in like a minute. So once the eight minutes runs out on my tent buff, I'll call it an hour. That was overall a good test though. Like this is my first time playing Awakening in over a year and I can see where I have some gaps that I need to fix. But overall, like, I like how it feels. Also, for anyone who's wondering, like, is Dark Knight high APM? I don't think so. I think it's not, like, the lowest, but it's not that bad. I think it was on the lower side, but I guess that is what we call it middle. But anyway, that's why I guess where I think it's at. It's not really that bad. Awakening, obviously, very um, higher APM than Succession is, but still not that bad so i guess like when i look at classes nowadays i've been playing dark knight for a long time and we have a lot of shift abilities like shift f shift lmb rmb and all that stuff and the one thing that i never really got used to is down attacks like um for example if you play valkyrie you have like down plus all your buttons instead of shift so that's one thing that like, my brain is not used to. And I would love to improve that one day. That's why I played Valkyrie for the recent season. I guess the ongoing one. And I actually learned a lot. Believe it or not, for all of you who are new, Valkyrie is my first ever character I made in this game. Because Dark Knight wasn't out back then, so... Yeah, I was thinking it was either Warrior or Valkyrie, which, like, <laughs> when I first started, they were basically the same. Just one is female, one is male. So I figured that one is, like, Valkyrie sounds cooler than Warrior.
Yeah, I think, like, overall, this is not the greatest hour. But it was, I, it felt more fun than Succession, at least. I think I would, let's see, right now I think I'm about at 13,000 trash loot total. And with Succession right now, I would probably be at like maybe 18,000 or 17. And also it didn't really help that my RNG with the spirit buffs is not there. It would be nice to get a lunar neck one time. Yeah, we're gonna have to run those bells, but I gotta do Garmoth first. Let me see. 18. Yeah, so I'll have 15 minutes left on this thing. I don't think Garmoth takes 15 nowadays, especially with reset. It should be over in like three. But if I got a fairy right now, that would be nice. What a spirit buff. Oh, there it is. Eat. Delete. Another shard. Those are going to be worth like 25 mil in the future. Whenever the 5 mil cap happens for your cups. So if you if you need them, I want to start grinding them now. Valkyrie delete. I'm glad they made that quality of life change where you only, like, you don't have to pick between the main hand and awakening. What a great change. So, we'll finish this up, and then I really have to go to Garmoth.
so yeah i just want to while we're wrapping up right now i just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you guys like uh, awakening content i could definitely do more of it but i think i need to practice a little bit more and once again if you're new to your channel hit that subscribe button would love to see you come back and we have two weeks left of our affiliate code so if you're thinking about checking out the game or buying any a coins which are pearls uh, use my code and i get a small portion of it so once again thank you so much for your support i will see you tomorrow peace also for the record we got about fifteen thousand trash loot and trash loot in here is 19k each so you could do the math plus we got like another 100 mil from like drops and everything black stones four bells which I don't actually know how much that is, so you guys can do the math on that, and I gotta go. Peace.